Now, the cabinet that we saw in the opening sequences, as it were, is this one. And what we've done so far is we've given that uh, two coats of the black ball paint, which I showed you, and it's had um, two stroke three coats of varnish on the top. And as you can see, it has come up quite nicely. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fit lighting into the recess which I've also painted with uh, black paint and the and the varnish so hopefully it should give a nice uh, reflection for the lights and then finally I'll fit the uh, fit the drawer handles and we should have a nice new modern piece of furniture so as I say we're going to be fitting some blue lights to this cabinet what I've done is I've turned the cabinet upside down simply so it's going to be easier to to work with because I intend to fit the lights round about here in the what will be the top of the cabinet. Um, what have we got? 12 volt blue LEDs. Um, these are these are quite good. These are the waterproof version. They've got like a a rubber cover over the top. Um, buying from eBay, and a set like that will cost you. Around about six pounds, maybe. A 12 volt transformer. Um, just going back to the the lights. Although they claim to be quite sticky on the back, they have this M3 uh, double sided tape on the back. I've found that to be quite ineffective. So what I tend to use is I tend to use these little things, which are I've got a very very good uh, sticky back on them. You just peel the back layer away and that will stick to whatever surface and then in the side there you can probably just see there's a hole through that you put a cable tie and secure that around the lights and, and that will hold the lights up and stop them from falling um, it's a basic wire again I think this was an eBay purchase a long time ago now cheap enough to buy and 100mm cable ties they're about 80 pence for 100 so um, they're the bits and pieces that we're going to be actually using okay now these lights you can use as a few as three of the LEDs they work in groups of three and you'll see that there are four copper colored dots and in between those there's a kind of a cut line and as long as you keep those in groups of three these lights will um, will go on if you've got loads of threes and then you cut it down to a two or a one the last light or two lights won't show so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest this against the cabinet and measure out to my nearest full three I'll just take a marker pen and I'm just going to put a little mark on there so I know where to cut. Okay, and there's all sorts of ways of cutting these. Um, and I'm going to try cutting these with a, a pair of pincers, as it were. Clean on the line like that. Now, what I need to do is I need to pass the, the wire that's going to be going into our transformer through the hole on the back of the the unit and if I can just move my camera around you can see there's a hole in the back there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that cable through the back hole okay, put that through there bring it out through to the front Now we're quite lucky really because off the first cut of the what the the lights they come with the the wires attached so I'm going to strip those wires cut these clean and I'm going to strip those wires Oops, 
bit, a little bit too firm with it, I think. There's one. There's two, and that's shrunk back. Well, I need a little bit more for that one. There we go. Okay. These ones have already been cut, so I'm just going to trim those ones down a little bit. One. Give that a twist. And there's two. Okay, so in order to join these wires together, first thing we need to do is tin each one of them with a little drop of solder. There's one. And the negative line. And I'm going to do the same with the power leads coming in. I'll drop the tin on there. Drop tin on there. And I'm sure you, that your experts are going to point out that there's loads of other ways of doing this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these red wires first of all, heat them up, hold them together just away from the iron, give a little glow, and that's joined them together sufficiently. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same with the two negative wires. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this. But there we go, that's our lights joined together for the first joint so they can go into the cabinet. And I'm going to apply a little bit of insulating tape to each one. What I'm going to do in this case is on the negative, I'm going to use black tape. And on the positive, I'll use a little bit of red. As long as they're insulated and there you are so those two now can't touch and short out I intend to fit the lights about two inches back from this lip so that when 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 we actually look at the cabinet we can't see the lights theirself we should just see the glow from the lights when they're switched on and like I said I'm going to use these adhesive pads so that I'm sure that my cable will stay up and I'm going to place one there and I'm going to place one at the other end into those I'm going to slip cable ties and they just pass through the slots in the side ready to drop the lights into in a moment make sure they're the right way up, the teeth are the right way like so now I will take the adhesive off the back of this just to give it a little bit of extra the, the paper off of the adhesive to give it a little bit of extra grip but I really don't put much faith in the adhesive that actually comes with this okay. so now I'm going to pop the lights into our cabinet, pressing down on the middle, pressing down all the way through and then I'm going to do our cable ties up just to ensure that that doesn't fall back down. Same with this one. Go. And just to keep things nice and tidy, we'll clip off the excess from the cable ties. Ok, 
Okay. Now in order to keep this cable tidy, I'm going to do the same with a couple of more of these, just to keep the cable up and out of the way, because we don't want the cable hanging down. Here's the first one, which I'll place quite close to its cables in. A second one towards the back, and a third one I'm going to place. Let's just take you down a little bit. So there's the two that I've already put in and the third one I'm going to place over here to ensure that there's some support just before it goes through the hole. There we are. And cable ties can be applied to these in a similar way and that will just to keep our cable Okay, so I've uh, taken the cabinet down and I've removed the door. I've also removed the handle. For the time being, I'm just going to put the, the door to one side. Um, these lights, let me turn this on the side. These lights now, this old strip, I'm just pull out. So I could probably make use of these lights again, but whether we will or not, I don't know. So again, I'll just pop those to one side. Now, <coughs> we need to obviously get a nice level surface. We'll take these pins out and then we're just going to sand that over just to give it a key and get rid of some of this loose flaking paint. And all this would just need two coats of the uh, blackboard. So these are the pegs that hold the shelf in, just steel pegs. I just want to take them out because I don't want to paint over those. We should pull them all out and we'll put them somewhere soft. I'm using a medium brake paper on a sandy block. And this will be sand on to give a key.
Linda. Oh, so I'll go. Because I've seen the paint inside the unit. <coughs> so again, I don't spill any paint on the on the table or on the cloth itself. Give our paint a bit of a stir. Again, because it's water based, I can use a screwdriver to do that because I've seen to wipe off the excess paint. in there and put your coat in there. I would advise that you if you go back over it with down strokes, pulling the paint out in one direction. Okay, so that's the first coat of paint put onto the uh, cabinet and we're just going to leave that now um, 
I'm going to leave that to dry off now. So that's now the two coats of paint applied. Um, the second coat tends to dry pretty quickly so we won't have to wait long. Once that coat has dried then we can start applying our varnish to the surfaces that require it which in this case will be the outside, certainly the two long runs, possibly the top and the facer of the door.
Well the door frame is now dry enough to apply some varnish. I'm going to be applying Johnson's interior wood varnish. It's a clear variety. I'm going to give that a couple of coats. So that's our first coat of varnish and that's going to require maybe four hours to dry. Once that's dried we can look to see what it's like. If it's not too bad we can just simply go straight ahead and apply a second coat and so on. I should have said in uh, earlier by the way the brushes that you use for both this type of varnish and also this paint can simply be washed out in warm soapy water. They're water based um, coatings and your brushes, just a simple rinse under the tap, little drop of soap and uh, your brush is as good as new. Now, 
before I do the electrical work on this I'm going to leave that to dry overnight and then in the morning it's just a question of putting the strip lights in refitting the door changing the handle and then we can put the cabinet up.